Our next play by Peter Braden, Meredith Colson, Jesse Motts, and Courtney Fed is Operation War Pigs, a modest proposal for preventing Iowa becoming a burden to its government. <laughs> Madam President, this is a national crisis. What? What are you talking about, Chief? You know how we've sometimes supported some less than ideal governments because we thought that they could give us things we needed? Yeah, you mean like Iraq during the 1980s, or how about Indonesia during the 1960s? Or, and don't forget about South Vietnam that lasted from the 1950s through the 1970s. Uh, yes, ma'am. You know, and then of course it backfires on us. We give them all this training, these tools and money, and then they come back against us. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, yeah, you could say I'm familiar with that situation. Uh, ma'am, it's happened again. <laughs> wait, wait, don't tell me. Those damn Belgians! Uh, uh no, ma'am. Uh, this time it's a state we invested millions in. We built up their railroads. We subsidized their agriculture. We gave them favorable trade policies, and they turn around and build biological weapons facilities. So... Uh, Wait, hold on. They're producing all kinds of, <laughs> they're producing all kinds of drug resistant bacteria as we speak. Well, what are we going to do about this? Ma'am, I suggest a liberation force. 300,000 people. We go in there with Navy SEALs, Predator drones. We carpet bomb the hell out of them, bomb them back to the Stone Age. Boom! <laughs> so dramatic, Chief. I don't know. We're already caught up in so many conflicts across the globe, plus, this sounds dangerous, and not to mention, no, ma'am. The targets are highly visible. If they try to flee into neighboring states, we'll send the Navy SEALs. We'll take them out. Then, the train is flat, and there are few obstacles. Our soldiers are very familiar with local culture. And don't you worry about the expense. The cornfields are rich enough that we expect the invasion will pay for itself. Wait, wait, wait. You just said cornfield. Uh, yes, ma'am. We need to liberate Iowa. <laughs> GMO thing. You, you got know? it, girl. Yeah. So I get to go to a pig farm later today. Check out the sweet boots. Very nice. I visited lots of pig farms in Spain. They seem like real chill places, you know? Pigs are living a good life, eating their acorns. Their meat is so clean, you actually can eat it raw. No way. Why? Yeah. Well, not so much in the U.S. I mean, these factory farms, they're pretty bad news. And uh, these new ag gag laws that they have, uh, have them all but close to the public. The only way I could get in was as an undercover inspector, and uh, my sweet internship at the DNR really hooked me up. Very nice. And it looks like we might be getting ready for another war against these industrial pig farmers. So I figured before the shooting starts, I better get in and see what's up. Yeah, I heard about that too on The Daily Show. That's where I get all my news. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to actually go protest at the Capitol against the war. Peaceful activism and all. But good luck with the swine farm. Put the picture on Pinterest or Facebook or something. I'll check it out. Right on, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Free the pigs! Free the pigs! <laughs> Records are all in order then, so we'll get started. I'd offer you the grand tour, but the taxpayers' dollars are wasting, right? Just take you where you need to go. Uh, yeah, a full tour would actually be great. Uh, first day out of the office, you know, I'd love to see what's up. I can honestly say you're the first government gal to ever take me up on that. Usually, they don't want to get their hands dirty. All you need are a couple of water samples and check out the tanks, right? I'll take you right by the creek. The sunset's so nice today. Uh, you mind if I take a photo? Sorry, little miss. If you don't put that cell phone camera away, I'm going to have to throw it in a manure lagoon. Uh, it, it interferes with animal feeding operations, you understand. Are the pigs shy or something? Uh, it's just my personal phone. It's not like it's for business or anything. Uh, no can do, little lady. Rules are rules. I'm sure you understand how that is, being with the government and all. All you people do is make rules. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. So here are some of our <laughs> <laughs> juicy pumpkin. <laughs> 
Diamond pens. Not the best smell in the world, but when you get it for $1.99 a pound, I'm sure you can forget all of that. No. Hey there, where are you going? No speak the English, senor. <laughs> Bathroom break is until 10. A las dias, Raul, poor favor. You know that. Get back inside. But, but, uh, ba bathroom? Do you have I nines for that guy? Proof of citizenship? Uh, you lady people will have to take that up with corporateness. Uh, not like I carry those things around in my pocket. <laughs> okay, let's just get. this stuff in real life. All these flies, and I'm pretty sure I saw a rat the size of a small dog. And those hogs just look so unhappy all cooped up in there. God, it makes me sick. How can you even eat pork after seeing all this? Oh, silly girl, I never eat pork. I'm a red meat kind of man. Uh, the, <laughs> the, we, I get enough for uh, fillets and Angus. The pork chops, we'll leave that for the government salaries. Yeah, I was already a vegetarian, and uh, today simply reinforced that personal decision. A hippie. I should have known. You coming in from big city Des Moines and all. You realize how close you're cutting it on your uh, setback from the creek back there, right? I mean, we're talking feet here, and that's the whole county's watershed. Hey, darling. I didn't build the place. I'm just here to keep sh make sure we keep providing our customers with what they pay for. Value, flavor, juicy plum. Anyone ever tell you this is pretty much a bioterrorist plot waiting to happen? Superbugs, uh, swine flu, all that? So now you're with Homeland Security, are you? Make up your mind, government lady. I think we should head back to your truck. You got everything you needed. You know, your DNR people don't usually ask so many questions or enforce the laws so vigorously. <coughs> Is that a guy over there? <coughs> I'm Mira, back to work. <laughs> They're pay you think we're paying you to smell the Iowa air? Igual hacen para las cien mil puntos. I began my Iowa journey in Rock Valley, Iowa, a town nestled along the Rock River in northwestern Iowa, where I had hoped to visit a CAFO, a concentrated animal feeding operation. CAFOs have gathered our attention in the last few years as they've become the predominant source of the meat we eat. They've also been implicated in a number of offenses, from the unethical treatment of workers, to animal cruelty, environmental violations, and a rising concern, human illness, from antibiotic-resistant bacteria. We did find some CAFOs in Iowa, but our cameras were turned away at the gate. Before leaving Rock Valley, however, I had the good fortune to meet the Hubbard family. Ken and Mary grew up here, spent their childhoods on family farms, swimming in the Rock River in the summers. They're unhappy with the changes they're seeing on the landscape around them, however, and are considering throwing in the towel. Hi, Ken. Hi, Mary. Thanks for chatting with me today. I was hoping you guys could tell me a little bit more about what it was like growing up here in Rock Valley. Well, my grandfather came here in the 1930s, and he took over from my great-grandpa's hog operation. Uh, Mary grew up just down the road, the family's dairy farm. They milked about 50 head and grew some, some uh, hay, some corn, you know, oats, that kind of thing. Didn't you have some chickens as well? Yeah, we had a little of everything, Meredith. It was just so nice to grow up there and lay out in the pasture with the cows. Right by the river, we even had an old cottonwood that had a great swing. You could swing off right into the river. Aw, sounds idyllic. Why would you guys ever want to leave? Well, my parents sold the farm to a big pig operation and moved into town about 15 years ago. And by that time, they were surrounded by the feedlots, and the smell was just terrible. Ah, uh, I imagine. Kind of takes the pleasure out of drinking your morning coffee on the porch, I suppose. <laughs> you got it. Mom developed asthma from the dirt that would blow across the lots into their house. Eventually, the guys over there made them a deal they couldn't refuse, and within a week, there were 40 hogs in the space where our house used to be. Yeah, and for me, my parents actually got rid of their cattle in the 1970s. They switched over to where the money was, where the, the cash grain. They even got rid of that old cottonwood because they planted